Welcome to April's Eco Challenge. Today's problem is combination sum four. Given an array of distinct integers and a target integer target, return the number of possible combinations that add up to target. The number is guaranteed to fit in a third two-bit integer. We're given a list of numbers that are all going to be distinct, and we have our target four. So how many possible combinations can we make to create a target of four? Let's see here, we have four ones, two ones and one two, two ones and one two, but in a different order, one, one, and one, three, so on and so forth. But the big thing to note is that different sequences of these numbers are going to be counted as different combinations. The only exception to that is when we use the same number again and again. So all these ones, because we're using the same one, if we, even if we reordered this, it would still be counted as the same combination. OK, so normally with this kind of problems, there's usually a brute force solution. There's a recursive solution, and then there's going to be a DP solution. Now, with a brute force method, there's really kind of hard to do that because we don't really know how many nested for loops we can have. The only thing we have is our target. We don't have a limit to how many numbers we can have in our combination because we can use the same number again and again. So we can do it recursively. We could probably start with one and go down kind of a bottom-up approach to find every single possible combination that has the target of four. Uh, but that's, unless we do memorization, that's not super efficient. We can just do a iterative solution here by using a DP array and building up uh, our target. So what I mean by that is say we had this example of one, two, three, and target of four. Let's build up a DP array of all the targets that we can have. All What this DP array represents is going to be every target all the way up to the main target that we're actually trying to calculate. So with this here, our target of zero, this will always be one because there's only one way to form a target of zero, which is no numbers at all. Now, all we have to do then is to check every single one of our numbers uh, and look back in our DP array if our number is less than the number that target we're checking it, it right now or less or equal to the target we're checking right now. Just look back and see, uh, subtract the number that we're checking with our DP array and see if we can uh, add up whatever number we had there, which is the number of combinations we could have formed with zero to the number we have right here. So when we're checking one, we can see with one, uh, one is less or equal to the target that we're checking. So we'll subtract one check with zero and add that here. Two and three are gonna be greater than the target we're checking. So we skip those. Now with two, uh, we start with one, we move back one and we add that one here. And with two, we move back two and we form two here. So basically what's happening, it's like, it's kind of like the climbing stairs problem where we're looking back to see how many combinations we could have formed at that point, because we know if we subtract two at this target, we know that uh, whatever we had at the base case of zero or whatever base case or whatever case before that we're checking for, uh, we can add that up to our next target. So it's kind of a, bottom-up tabulation or dynamic programming solution. And at the very end, we should have our total number of combinations for the number that we're checking. Okay, so what we'll do is first create our DP array. Start with an all zeros and have target plus one. And the reason we have to plus one here is because we need our zero as well as our base case. So we're gonna call that DP zero is gonna equal to one always. Now for T in target, or actually t in range of one to target plus one. We are going to check every single one of our numbers for n in nums. If the number that we're checking is less or equal to target, let's update our DP array for DP t to equal or plus or equal DP t minus n. Now at the very end, we should have our answer to just return our DP of target. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, typo. Okay, so that looks like it's working. So let's go ahead and submit it. And there we go. So time complexity is going to be O of n times O of t, or n times t. And we do have our DP array, so that's going to be O of t space. 
Now, I knew this answers this problem because I've seen it before. Um, as I was trying to solve it again, I was realizing that this is more difficult than I remembered. Even though the solution is simple, getting this logic, um, getting the intuition down was actually more difficult than I remembered. One thing to note is like, if we had negative numbers allowed here, how does this change the problem? Well, that changes it a lot because now we could have an infinite possible number of solutions. Say we had negative one and one, how many ways can we form zero? There's actually a lot of ways we can form zero. We can have negative one, one, we can have negative one, negative one, one, one. It's infinite, right? So we have to have some sort of limitation, a maximum number of numbers we can use to allow that to work. Now, would this solution still work for that sort of problem? I'm not sure. Uh, so that's something I want to think about before I try to answer that. Anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, there's definitely a lot of solutions to this. Recursive solutions definitely work as long as you memorize. Uh, but I like this because it's very simple. Okay, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.